you guys remember that cat that we got a few episodes ago? Well, fun fact. We actually found him. Somehow, he got lost in the nether when he was following me, and I, n I guess he never caught up with me. And I was just kind of flying around, checking to make sure everyone's bases were okay, and their nether portals were okay, because I did do a lot of chunk resetting. And I found the cat, he just teleported to me, so I was like, oh, okay. And then it, now, he is with us. This time, we actually need to come up with a name, so how about Sprinkles? I mean, I'd say that's a pretty decent name. In other news, I have done a little bit of work off camera in between episodes on the base. If you look around the edges here, you can see the dirt is now gone. I replaced it with stone and andesite, so now it blends in with the rest of the base. If we head down here, it looks pretty much the same except for there's some dark oak trees. Changed a little bit of the floor inside the villager areas, and you'll see that, and I really like the look of it actually. We got a bunch of uh, shulker boxes and chests here. I think it's turning into a chest monster. Over here, you know, we just got a regular hallway and everything but over here everything looks normal except for the fact that i added a farmer area not all of them are farmers yet i don't have enough composters but we will soon and this guy i've never even traded with him but he decides he wants to stay a fletcher which is kind of annoying not gonna lie but over here this is where i've been doing a lot of work if you just look through all of these shulker boxes there is so much stone and that is because I have been mining at the King's Hill Quarry. Now, we're at the King's Hill Quarry. It was going to be this big quarry at King's Hill where we just dig, right? Well, turns out I accidentally reset about half of the chunks at King's Hill. So the area that I dug out was completely covered over. So either we'll have to find a different place or we'll have to start again. Either way, I don't really mind because that just means more stone. And also over here, I added the exact same hallway as this one over on the opposite side. We also added a super smelter over here. Now, it's not been too crazy just yet. This is only 12 furnaces, but we will be able to extend it this way and this way if we, if we please. And I think once we get our iron farm up and running again, it will be very, very easy to make that happen. But of course, with the super smelter, I had to be, as, I had to be smelting something, right? Well, I, I smelted a whole shulker box of stone. And you probably already know what this is for, but it is for the exterior walls of the base. So very, very soon, once we can get some more sea lanterns, this whole outside piece is all going to be stone. And then afterwards, we can work on this little section here. And we can work on the outer island as well, because this, is, this place isn't just going to be floating. It's going to be on an island. So hopefully very, very soon, we can make that happen. But firstly, we do need fuel. So... We need to go ahead over to the blaze farm and actually grab some blaze rods because that's my fuel of choice because it is so easily renewable. So without further ado, I'll see you guys at the blaze farm. We're over here at the blaze spawner. I'm going to go ahead, hit a few of these blazes, and I'll see you guys when I have at least 12 stacks. We might actually get more considering we need to restock our shop, so it might be a while until I see you next. But nonetheless, let's go get ourselves some blaze rods. So considering it took me like an hour and a half just to get this much blaze rods i don't think we'll be using it as a fuel source i think we'll use mainly charcoal because that's pretty easy we have a super smelter to get all of it and we have a big tree farm on the outside to get the wood and of course we'll probably use coal blocks if possible but i don't think it will happen very easily now i just can't keep not staring at this thing i mean like this is a beautiful shot that I made. My favorite part is the fact that I used the wall blocks on, on, the, on the walls there, and they blend in with the windows and everything like that. I love that update. We need to head over to Three Dimensions and check up on the profits. No soul sand. Salt, that's empty. Okay. We got a fire res potion. Let's go ahead and write some of this down. Why is there grass in here? I don't know why there's grass in here, but there is no longer grass in here. Forest flowers. Surprisingly, nothing sold. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and put this back. Grab our wallets. And just put these in here. And yes, we will be using these netherite ingots probably in this episode. And we're definitely going to put it on the sword. And probably the boots. But so far, not too bad coming from the shop. Let's go ahead, head back to the base, and stock up 
our super smelter. So after cutting down literally virtually every single spruce tree up there, we have more than 12 stacks of spruce logs. And the reason I want 12 stacks is because it would be one stack of charcoal per furnace. So let's go ahead and load up 12 stacks into here. But in the end, we will have enough to power our super smelter. So the furnace is just finished. They're still going because there's a little bit of fuel left. But nonetheless, we got our 12 stacks of charcoal. We're going to go ahead and load it into each and every single furnace. We're going to take out these blaze rods that I was using because they kind of ran out of fuel. So, you know. But this charcoal should last us a long time time and hopefully we'll be able to fix the iron farm in this episode so we can go ahead and expand this and also do some other things with some hoppers if you know what i mean but before that i want to go head over to anthony's villager trading area to go ahead and get ourselves some mending books so we can put it on our pants on our boots and on our sword because i think it's about time we actually make that happen we are over here at anthony's villager area and we just need to find the mending man that was really easy. Oh, you have Unbreaking 3 as well? That's actually really good. I'm going to exploit you. Okay, next we need to find Feather Falling. I don't know if he has Feather Falling here, but we might as well give it a shot. There is no Feather Falling, which is just fine. I mean, we got a bunch of Mending and Unbreaking books, so I would say mission accomplished. So let's go head back home, put this on our stuff, and finally be able to say, that we got mending on our tools and not have to worry about anything breaking ever again. And most of you guys probably haven't seen this in a long time, but this is actually my original pair of diamond pants right here. This I found at Mushroom Hollow and they let me take. So we're gonna get rid of this. I'll just pop that in that chest. And all we need to do is add mending. Let's give it a name. I would say that's a pretty decent name. And of course, we'll add mending onto our boots as well. And of course, they are the one and only Jordans. We do need to mend up our thigh eyes, though. This is the bad haircut protector. And that's pretty much it. Oh, oh, we need my sword. Finally. Finally. So I'm going to go head over to the Enderman farm, mend all this stuff up. And now we can finally say all of our stuff has mending on it. We never have to worry about it breaking again. As the XP orbs fly into our hotbar, you can see... Everything is now mended up. It is all good to go. And I'm just, it just feels good, you know? It feels good that I don't have to worry about the durability of my tools anymore. It's a great, great feeling. Now with the two netherite ingots that I have, we will be upgrading my sword and my Jordans. But we will only do that once we get feather falling. I'm going to try and get feather falling from the enchantment table. And when I do... We'll combine everything. And finally, we won't have to worry about fall damage anymore because let me tell you, I have died a lot to fall damage in the past few days. You guys don't understand the struggle I had to go through to get this pair of boots. I have been here for two hours trying to get Feather Falling 4. Two hours. Yeah. it's uh, It's been a grind, but we finally got it. I also got another pair of boots, and if we combine these, we should get the ultimate boots. Uh, where's my anvil? I threw it off the edge. I feel so smart right now, guys. I mean, like I said, you know, I am a professional. They're falling protection, depth strider, breaking three, and then we'll add mending afterwards. These are the Jordans, two. All we gotta do is add mending. And we finally got our Jordans. We can officially retire our old Jordans without feather falling and put on our new netherite Jordans 2 with feather falling 4. That is the most important part. It's got everything we want on it. It took me longer than I wanted it to, but in the end, we made it happen. And we don't really have to worry about armor too much anymore. And actually, in here, I do have five ancient debris, which we can use to upgrade our thigh highs, which is probably something I'll do at one point or another. You'll see that happen. But I'm out of here. I am going to pack up my stuff and we are going to leave very fast so now we need to move on to some actual exciting things 
We're finally going to build something, and no, we're not going to work on the outer wall. No, we're not going to work on the piston door. We are going to build our very first self-sustaining automatic farm. And that would be a sugarcane farm. And the reason we need that is because, well, I'm always running out of sugarcane for fireworks. So we're going to put a nice sugarcane farm in the corner here. I already designed it. It looks absolutely amazing. You'll see it on screen right now. It does take a good bit of materials to make, but I'm sure we can take care of that. No problem. And one important thing when building here is that I do not want to go over the top of the wall here because I'm kind of still debating whether or not I want to do a roof or not. And if I do end up doing a roof, then it's going to be annoying having to move everything down below it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hit a third person time lapse and build ourselves a sugarcane farm. <laughs> about an hour and a half of a of king we need to go check what we got from the sugarcane farm now there's no real way to get down to where the chests are besides taking a little bit of a swim so this is where i've kind of put the chest just underneath here i'm sure we'll build a room for this and stuff like that but for now this is what we got to work with okay that's not bad i mean yeah that's that's not terrible considering this is going to be a passive thing and I'll probably have a farm that will actively make sugarcane for me. I'll have to sit there using bone meal. But I mean, as a passive thing, that isn't too bad. I'm going to go ahead and make some of this into fireworks as soon as possible. This is nice being able to actually fly again and not have to worry about rockets. You would think with a big witch farm, I wouldn't have to worry about this type of stuff. But I guess you thought wrong because, well, paper is also an issue. Listen, guys, we're not going to talk about the back, okay? If we don't talk about the back, it doesn't exist. You guys got me? Cool. The next farm I want to build is a cactus farm. Not sure where we're going to put it, but hopefully we can put it somewhere in here. Actually, now that I think about it, if we put a sugarcane farm in each corner of the base, I think that would be really, really cool. But of course, I don't think you guys want to see me build constantly. So I need to think of something else we can do. Considering I use this entrance all the time to get down to the villager area and to the super smelter, we need to build a way to get out. Well, we need to build a slime block launcher right here at the bottom that will shoot us up, up top. Now, the issue with that is I don't have any slime. So... We might need to commit a crime to get some of this slime. And no, I'm not willing to do the time for my crime, and I will not pay more than a dime. But we need to get ourselves some slime. So without further ado, let's go ahead and commit a crime and pay no less than a dime without taking up too much of our time. Well, turns out we're able to gather our slime without even committing a crime because it was in this chest here. Now, how much do we have? You know what, never mind, maybe we do have to commit a crime. Although, now that I think about it, our witch farm might have slimes there that we can use. Let's, let's go take a look at the witch farm and see if there's any slimes that uh, need to be taken care of. So everyone, one way or another, I got the materials. And I have noticed a crucial detail. So this is going to be our piston that pushes us up. If we put redstone underneath and we power it, that's not going to work. So to fix this, we actually need to have a layer of observers underneath. So essentially, this is what the bottom is going to look like, and there's going to be observers that are looking at the redstone, and when they notice an update, it will power the piston on top, therefore pushing us up. It's a pretty simple process, but I felt like it should have been explained, just so you guys know why there's observers there, and so if you want to build your own, you know what you're doing. But I'm going to figure out how to get this in here. And we're going to get ourselves a little bit of a door here. I also took some tests while I was in my testing world. 
And I noticed that slime blocks will push you eight blocks up when powered by a piston. Now if we just look, and that is five blocks there, six, seven, eight, right there, are eight, nine, 10, 11. So if we wanted to barely just get up, we would have to have the slime block launcher be right here, which I don't know if we can make that happen. So we might need another way to get ourselves up here. I'm not sure how though. All right, guys, just give me a second. We'll figure this out. Now that I think about it, I don't think it's possible that we could use anything to actually get us out of here. The only other thing I'm thinking of is a flying machine. But, you know, there's a lot of things around here that I would definitely be broken by a flying machine. And I don't really think it's very necessary. Essentially, what we'll do is we'll just fall down here, I guess. No, we'll have a chest at the bottom here with ender pearls in case we don't have an elytra. But mainly, we'll just be flying out of here, so... Yeah. I really wish that the slime block thing would have worked. That would have been super cool. It's just what happens. I actually want to unveil a new plan for a shop. Now, it's not one of the two shops I was talking about in the last few episodes. No. It is something completely brand new. Now, everybody has been wanting a food shop, and nobody has been able to deliver that. But just a little while ago, I completely forgot that butchers existed. Now, if we go ahead and find our butcher, right over here, we can take a look at his trades. He sells five cooked pork chops for just a singular emerald. If you have enough of these guys, you can easily stock up a shop without a problem. And that kind of made me think, is it really possible that we could open up a food shop? And the more I think about it, the more possible it seems to me. So maybe we give it a shot. Of course, there's a bunch of other foods that butchers don't sell that I would love to sell, like golden carrots. We'll have to use these guys to help us out in that department. But I think it's very possible that we could make a food shop and sell it. I mean, that's, that is a ton of money we can make right there. People need food. It's not something you just want to buy. It's like, you need it. But we're going to make a lot of money off of this if we actually do end up doing it, which is the plan. Which is the plan. So, what I want to do is I want to work on farmers right now. Getting them leveled up and figuring out which ones want golden carrots. And I want to figure out which ones sell golden carrots. So then we can cure them and buy them one emerald for three golden carrots. Therefore, giving us really good prices. So, I'm going to trade with these guys, get them leveled up, and then we'll cure them and buy ourselves some golden carrots. So, I'll see you guys when we start the curing process. Well, I just got done trading with our villagers for quite a long time. Now, I mainly bought a lot of things instead of selling them. So, let's go over some of the things that I decided to keep. As you can tell, there's a lot of cookies. There's some bread, you know, some pumpkin pie, good amount of apples, which will help us out later with golden apples. But yeah, a lot of cookies. Not sure what we're going to do with those cookies, but who knows? Now, all of these villagers actually do sell golden carrots as their final trade, which is absolutely amazing. So that means every single villager in here that is maxed out, we are going to, we're going to turn them into a zombie. We're going to cure them, and we're going to get ourselves some really good prices on our golden carrots. Now, of course, curing villagers isn't exactly an easy feat, and to set up a system for it won't be easy either. So I'm going to go ahead into my test world, set up a nice zombie curing system. We're going to build it here, literally down the hall. We're just going to build it at the end of there, and then we're going to get ourselves some better prices. All right, everyone, we got a pretty simple system going on right now, essentially. We just have some powered rails here that are depowered to stop the villager from moving around. He's in a minecart. We're going to have him get hit by the villager. We're going to have him on this track at one point or another. We're going to cure him up. And then we'll send him into that glass chamber, which he will then walk back out into society. But next, we need to grab some weakness potions and golden apples. Don't know how many I have of either, but hopefully we have a decent amount. Okay, four golden apples. That'll last us, I don't know, we'll see. 
Next, we need to do weakness potions. So I need to go ahead back over to my base, grab some brewing stands, bring them over here, kill this creeper, and, you know, do our thing. Perfect. We got our first zombie villager. So the next thing we need to do is push them along and not die. But now I'll work on the rest of the villagers, and maybe we'll put this in the form of a time lapse. So yeah, let's go ahead and start up a time lapse, and let's cure ourselves some villagers. This took about an hour, but I am extremely satisfied with everything that we did. We, we cured every single max level villager that we have. All the rest of the guys are sleeping in there, which to be honest, there isn't many of them, which is awesome. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 villagers that all will sell us a bunch of building carrots. Now, without further ado, let's let them free. Well, I just see they are all very eager and willing to go ahead right back and boom. Now we can get rid of this ugly mess. And the curing process was very, very effective with what I did. So essentially, I would steal them with the boat, I would drag them underneath this gate, because I put glass here so they wouldn't pathfind out, but I could still drive a boat underneath. Then, I would go over here, where you can also get the glass in here. And they would stand right here, but they don't pathfind onto rails, so I'd put the minecart here, I'd push the button, come on, which would push them right into the minecart. Therefore, they get into the minecart, and then I push them over here, to Brad, infected, I give him the potion, I give him the apple, then we send him on his way over to waiting station one, and then once another one comes in, we move this guy forward, and we get him into waiting station number two. Then, once we're done, we pop him in a boat, and then we just bring him into the little holding chamber, and then I waited to do every single one. The reason I wanted to put them in a holding chamber is because I didn't want the cured ones to mix back in. With the uncured ones so there wasn't any confusion because let me tell you there'd be quite a bit of confusion now we don't have to worry about that anymore i'm gonna leave this stuff down here just because it's out of the way and i'll probably be doing more villager curing in the future so i want to make sure that we still have all our stuff for it but other than that we are completely done with the villager curing i am very very happy how everything turned out i'm not very happy because of the fact that there are skeletons here all right everyone i have traded with every single villager once completely took all of their stock of golden carrots and this is how much you get you get five stacks and 40 therefore meaning it's gonna take at least around five times five whole cycles to get a full shulker box of golden carrots now i won't actually be eating these golden carrots myself but i know everybody else will be and i know this is going to be the most popular product so i'm going to need to grind this out as much as possible so i will be spending all of these emeralds i will also be making a bunch of emeralds so we can get as much of these things as possible i will also be trading with the butchers to get some meat and of course I'll be saying hi to those Fletchers over there. Let's also not forget that we do have a crop farm up there. And this is where I got probably about a quarter of my emeralds from, which isn't too much in the end. But in terms of golden carrots, that's a pretty decent amount. And I guess I will see you guys probably tomorrow when I have a good stock of everything that we need. Alrighty, we are here in the shopping district. We found a spot 
and we have our shop laid out. It's nothing too big because to be honest, right here is going to be all the products. It will be easily accessible from the outside just for people's convenience. And the inside, it's going to be all decoration to be honest. So we're selling five things. That would be apples, pumpkin pie, chicken, pork chops, and golden carrots. So I'm going to go ahead and get this built. I don't know if you guys want to see another time lapse. So we will not do another time lapse. And we'll build ourselves the food shop that everybody has been waiting for. Now, for some of the members, you might be wondering why is this taking so long for this video to come out? Well, you know, today is the day that the Staying Motivated in Survival episode has come out. And, uh, well, uh, as you can tell, I built a shop. It's a awesome, awesome medieval-style build. I decided to just put it next to the wood shop here just because it kind of fits the style, you know? I really love it. It's like a bakery type of butcher shop. It, it just looks amazing. So we got all the food here. We got a diamond for stack. Two diamonds a stack, diamond for stack, two diamonds a stack, and a diamond for half a stack. On the inside, we just got some tables and stuff like that. We got some composters here, because why the hell not? You know, we got a little cooking station. We got a campfire underneath to produce that amazing smoke aroma. So then, when you're walking by, you smell the amazing foods, and you're just instantly drawn over to the shop. Now, I mean, Nick was over here. He usually likes to buy a lot of things. So let's go ahead and check out what we got. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. Oh my god. Oh my god. 53 diamonds. Jeez. You might be wondering why he already had a diamond on me. Well, that's because uh, he restocked. He had 13 stacked in here. And I bought every single one of them. Hopefully that should last me a long enough time to the point where I can actually get some work done on the base. And in fact, maybe we should head over there. And this might actually be a longer episode just because of the fact that I have a lot more time to make it. And I really don't want to go too far ahead in time. So, you know what? Let's go ahead over there and see what we can do. Ladies and gentlemen, it has taken so long, so incredibly long, but we have finally, finally completed the main structure of this base. It is absolutely crazy how much time we have put into this. On the screen right now, you will see the total amount of time we have spent just in this episode alone. In just the time lapses. So, if you appreciate the effort, please leave a like on the video. My fingers really hurt. I'm literally making myself go, go through pain just so you guys can be entertained. But I am so satisfied with it. It has been so long. Since this base was first conceptualized a long, long time ago, it was back on season three of the Bedrock version. 
over a year ago. But now, we revisited the design. And we finally completed it. I'm sure past me would be so happy. But, in other news, I invited the only other person online, which is Colin, over here to have a little bit of a celebration with me. You know, to celebrate me finishing the main part of my base. So, I mean, there, there's one block left. I think you know what we need to do. You gotta place it down, man. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Do it. And it's now finished! Yay! Yay! After all this time. Yeah! Right. Yeah! It's all done! We're celebrating oh. wasting so many hours of my life. It's great. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. that's... It paid off. I it think. sure did. I hope. I don't know yet. We'll see. There are a whole lot of mobs down there. Uh, there there's a few. There's Quite a, a lot. Anyways, I think you have to go. I think somebody needs you. Uh, yeah, I think so. It's probably not for a good reason, though. Um, yeah. Good luck well, uh, with uh, finishing everything else here. I'll uh, yeah. hopefully not die while trying to fly out. Yeah, good luck not dying to Anthony. As I pondered for another thing to do in this episode, it struck me. We need to build a wither skeleton farm. And not just because I want to but also because everybody really needs it. I mean, everybody has been asking for Wither Skeleton Skulls all the time. And I mean, let's be honest, who doesn't need them? I need them because I want beacons here. I want beacons to go. I want to sell beacons. We need them. And I found a super simple, super simple way to do it. So, we need to find another fortress that's in a soul sand valley or a warped forest. We need a lot of buttons. We're gonna need some trap doors. We're gonna need a we're gonna need a good amount of materials. But in the end, it's all gonna be worth it. So, you know, without further ado, let's go head over to the nether. Let's build this far. And no, there will be no time lapse, because I'm sure you're sick of that. We're here at the nether fortress. And we need to find the crossroad that is in a soul sand valley or crimson forest. Now, I'm not too sure. I have to look. Uh... Okay, no, we're definitely not in the right place. Never mind. It's still more this way. This looks to be about right. As you can tell, these are new chunks. That's That's a magma cube. So, without further ado, I'll see you guys when I'm done. We have constructed our Wither Skeleton Farm. But, as you can probably tell, it isn't very effective. And that's just because of the fact that we have not spawn-proofed this fortress. They seem to actually spawn in higher densities inside the fortress now. Just because of the fact that we have this farm built. So, we need to go back here and spawn-proof it. So we can actually prevent as many spawns as possible and condense them into here. Now we might also have to change out all these blocks for nether bricks. I don't know yet. We'll find out very, very shortly. It kind of works. Kind of works. I base this off of literally like one picture. Um, but of course, we don't want to come back like ever. So, you know, we're up here. I marked it out. This is going to be where we're going to go through. We're going to come back, break the bedrock. But for now... We're not, no, we're not going back. So we're going to go get out of here. We're going to find something else to do. But guys, I do believe we are out of time here for this episode. I apologize. But by the time you see this episode, it's going to be at least a week from the last video. I mean, obviously. But this is the second episode that I have pre-recorded, episode 12 and this one are pre-recorded i just have to edit them as of now and the current date is the fifth just the day after their survival video went up you know when i talked about tips for staying motivated but yeah that just went up yesterday so uh i don't know we'll see maybe we put it out for two weeks although that is a very long time but i want to thank you guys so much for watching because you guys are amazing if you made it this far because this has been quite a long episode Obviously, if you made it this far, you had to have liked the video, so please, hit the like button. 
Check out the links in the description, and without further ado, I am heading out. Bye.